This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello, welcome to Quok Talk. I'm Crystal here. It's the season. Christmas is here upon us, and it's time for Nutcracker. Now, classical ballet always has its beauty of tradition and, and gorgeous sets and costumes. But today on Quok Talk, of course, we're going to have to deconstruct that a little bit and challenge these stereotypical gender and racial roles that kind of are assumed into a lot of classical uh, performances. Uh, so on that note, I have two professional dancers here to talk about the beauty <laughs> and trials and tribulations of being in the production of the Nutcracker here at Ballet Hawaii. So let's introduce our guests. So this is... <laughs> Hi, I'm Red Wertheimer. Um, I'm playing the role of Clara in this year's Nutcracker, and I'm also a student at Mid-Pacific and Ballet Hoi. So people don't know who Clara is if you don't know anything about ballet. It is the, um, the story evolves around Clara, and maybe Red can explain that a little bit later. And then we have Miss Mickey. Hi, I'm Mickey Kohlberg. I'm a dance teacher at Ballet Hawaii, and I'm not a student. No, you're not just a student. You're not just a I'm ballet a lifelong Hawaii. student. <laughs> Mickey, share a little bit about your past, because a lot of people just from ballet school know you as a teacher, but they don't know your past as a mm. professional dancer. Okay, well, I have a very short career, but I started um, training professionally at the Kiroff Academy in Washington, D.C. Um, and from there, I was a trainee with Ballet Austin. A trainee is like an unpaid company member. <laughs> and then I danced professionally with the Louisville Ballet in Kentucky. And then I moved to England and wow. danced with a small company in London called Ballet Black. Ballet Black, is that still mm -hmm. around? That's yes. an interesting title. Yes. Is there anything reference to? Yeah, um, it, it was a pretty amazing experience. It was kind of a, a weird find. I wasn't planning on performing with them at all. I didn't even really know they existed at the time. Um, but they're uh, specifically for black and Asian dancers. Oh. Um, and the company right now is seven members. When I was there, it was about five. And the artistic director, Casa Pancho, is a female. All right. <laughs> Not your typical male artistic yep. director. Um, and she's put together this amazing little company that tours throughout the UK. Um, and they've grown. and. Um, they don't do Nutcracker yet, but I'm, mm. I'm thinking at some point they're considering it. That'd be it. great. So, a little mini. Yeah. Everybody has like five different parts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. They have to move around, quick change costume. Yeah. But you brought up some very interesting and important issues is that the um, aspect of color, as in like racial distinctions and gender roles in the world of ballet. Um, Red, what do you, th I mean, you're a student here. But you lived in Asia before. By the way, if anybody doesn't know, she's my daughter. She just happened. Uh, right. That's just a weird kind of like coincidence. <laughs> right? But what is the story of the Nutcracker? And from your perspective as Asian, well, biracial, growing <laughs> right. up in Asia and coming here and seeing interpretations, that's kind of, I don't know if you both agree that Nutcracker is mostly Eurocentric based on the history and the tradition mm -hmm. of the story. Well, um, there are many versions of the Nutcracker. And basically, Clara, she kind of carries the whole story. Um, Drosselmeyer is her mysterious uncle, and he and um, his nephew, the prince, kind of take her on this magical journey throughout this land of wonders and candy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody's dream. Yep. <laughs> Do you think the role of uh, Clara and a lot of the roles are just very clear cut, like feminine and masculine in The Nutcracker? Yes. And in a lot of classical ballets, people yes, would agree? So. Definitely. Do you think that's something that needs to be challenged? Yes. How? Um, well, in the battle scene, there are the rats, and I'm, you know, acting like, oh my god, there's literally a, a like, <laughs> we just all, like, you know, shiver because the rat king comes on, and then the prince is my savior, and he fights the rat king while I just act scared in the back. And, you know, I want to fight the rat king, and <laughs> I don't know, that <laughs> way should give me a sword. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's all I'm saying. That's true. That's the guys always have the fun. Yeah. You know, we're always assuming that it's the damsel in distress. It's mm -hmm. the girl who's the fragile one that needs to be saved by the prince. And and today in today's age, you know, we can't just kind of accept those old. I mean, there's a beauty to tradition, but there's also a beauty to challenging and reinterpreting things. Mm -hmm. Mick, you said that there were other interpretations of the Nutcracker that you've seen before too. Yeah. Um, well, there's some more like modern versions, not just classical ballet. Um, that take, I think they, I think they play with the role of Clara a little bit. Mm -hmm. That she's not always the same demure, sweet little oh, yeah? girl. Um, uh, I know that 
the traditional, I mean, most companies do a traditional nutcracker. But what I think actually is interesting about the female heroine in ballets, in all classical ballets, is that the ballet does revolve around the female. It mm -hmm. does revolve around her story, and it's always the female in the end who's standing in the center of the stage. Yes, we have a couple of photos ballet. of the classic version of the, you know, the fairy. I think um, this was our ballet Hawaii version. Um, let's take a look at some uh, what we have of the ballet Hawaii version of the Nutcracker. Um, well, that's the new one. Well, let's show that later. We don't want to. <laughs> um, the old ones were the classical ballet, um, where I forget the name of the act, uh, ballerina who came on. Um, Last the last couple of years, she was like the sugar plum fairy. Um, yes, Megan, that's Megan Fairchild. Fairchild. Yeah. From yeah. New York City um, do we have that photo? Okay, so is that her? Um, that's actually Leslie Rausch. So okay. this is the Waltz of the Flowers. Uh -huh. Leslie's with Pacific Northwest Ballet. Okay, so this is the classic interpretation. There's always the, but she's also a strong mm -hmm. woman because they these are the you know the queens mm -hmm. of their kingdom, yes. right? Yes, I think typically ballet features the strength of women, but the roles that they play aren't necessarily up to date. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. But it definitely, it's about the ballerina. Um, and I know both PNB and um, New York City Ballet are influenced heavily by George Balanchine, mm -hmm. who kind of revered women yeah. um, and found them as his muse. Right. But he also choreographed a little bit more contemporary jazz style um, ah. ballets mm -hmm. that put the women on a different you know, it wasn't necessarily a story ballet, but it right. put the women on a different front, I think. Right. And I believe um, Harlem Ballet, is it, that, is it their company name? The Harlem Nutcracker, they transformed it all to use Duke Ellington music. So it was jazzy yeah, and it's very awesome. cool and reinterpreted. Mm -hmm. Now, the one we are doing at Ballet Hawaii is the Tchaikovsky's, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and how do you feel about the different roles? Like, you know, there's, there's the, okay, we're going to talk about racial stereotypes. Let's, we have to talk about the, the Chinese dance. What's with the, what's the song in that I don't know what that means. What's the chopsticks? I don't know. Oh, that was the chopsticks. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Why isn't it like this? <laughs> <laughs> and then they have and this the hats. Set, the, yeah, oh, the China yeah. Chinese hat. hat. Yeah. It, it's really embarrassing, it really. I mean, it's such a caricature of Chinese culture. I mean, I guess they're trying to, they're trying to obviously represent different countries. And I guess in order to do that, that's, that's what people believed would make it. I mean, now we're, we have so much more access to yeah. seeing things worldwide without leaving the comfort of our home. Mm -hmm. So I feel like people are a little bit more educated in that aspect. But I think people just take for granted that this is a classical piece and it's traditional, so nobody uh, cares to think about how things were portrayed. Because Tchaikovsky wrote this in 1892. Right. And then when the ballet came out, you think about maybe their version of Orientalism mm -hmm. was that. And what about the Arabian dance? Mickey, you performed in that, and you still are doing that this year. We have yeah. a couple of photos of you doing oh. the Arabian Yay. dance, it's fine. Huh? But let's talk about that. How do you feel about the image of the, I mean, it's a very seductive dance. Yeah. I mean, there's a beauty to that, but some people will criticize the racial undertones of it, but is that kind of part of that? I think so. I think, I mean, it's in the music. Regardless of what ethnicity Arabian is going to be, the music is just very sultry. Yes. Um, as a dancer, uh, I, I tend to just, you know, to listen to the music and interpret it, and, and there's no other way to interpret that music yeah. than to, whether, whether I want to come out feeling sexy or not. You're, I, you're dressed you know, I can't sexy, help though. it. I don't know if you the photo. You're dressed in like an Arabian costume. Oh, yeah. oh, for this <laughs> one, yeah, this one. So in yeah, the oh, This is a Hawaiian oh, version, though, which is really yes. neat. So we're interpreting, our characters here are actually Hi'iaka and Lohi'au, which are traditional Hawaiian uh, gods and goddesses. So oh pretty. Um, so we, yes, we're There's dressed in nothing more, but a leaf. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, so, but this goes back and wow. forth with the reinterpretation that the Valley Hawaii has brilliantly done to use the Hawaiian backdrop instead mm. of the Arabian one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, been, that's one of the reasons why I'm enjoying this one. Septim kind of has taken the traditional nutcracker and um, for Hawaii has, has been able to change it around to, mm. to suit Hawaii's needs. And that's something that's quite groundbreaking, yes? Yeah, and very, yeah, and he's incredibly creative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you tell a little bit about Septim and who he is? Um, I, he is, a crea I think, a creative genius. I think he really knows how to... Where is he from? People um, don't he's know from, he is. Sorry, he's from Washington Ballet okay. originally, and now he's working as artistic director of Hong Kong mm -hmm. Ballet. 
Great. So that's <laughs> yeah. Connection connection. To us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and speaking of uh, all the kind of revamps, I don't know if we want to. This is a pretty uh, special kind of behind the scenes clip uh, because I'm involved in a little small part, so I was able to film the rehearsal. So there's a small video, uh, if we can pull up, of the behind the scenes um, rehearsal <laughs> process of the Nutcracker being practiced now, if we can find it. If not, we can do it right after the break. But um, let's talk a little bit about those roles, like you say. You know, when you said that, how come Clara can't do the sword fighting? <laughs> And then when I re-look at the story and how it's portrayed, like how the girls are rocking their dolls. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of discussions about oh, that. Really? She and I, uh, but more on the aspect of that, she's she is a more mature Clara. I believe she's a little bit, she at least appears more mature than the other Claras <laughs> we've had, I think, in the past. They're, she's not as little girlish. And so she and I have been talking about how to portray Clara as her mm. and, and a little bit less as a little girl, but mm -hmm. as a girl who's you know, maturing and becoming a young adult in that journey through the kingdom of sweets. <laughs> right. And that's a little bit different, I yeah. think. And I think there's that dynamic between like the prince, this distant, um, intimidating, but attractive mm -hmm. figure that you don't know really how, you know, like a teenage girl, you don't know, you're, you're kind of Yeah, there's some kind of intrigue and mystery. Mm -hmm. yes. And then especially this year, our prince is an older man as well. He's not, not yeah, older, older man. man. <laughs> Sorry, older <laughs> boy. He's like in, in his 20s, I yeah. believe. So, and that tip, last year it was a teenager. So it was very different. Mm -hmm. You know, we have two very much more mature people, I think, in the roles. And who, uh, Jose, where is he from? Jose Rodriguez. He is from. I'm not going to say because I don't want to get it wrong. How about this? Right? We'll show people a glimpse of this rehearsal process. Yeah. Again, to remind people, this is a really just working pro process. They don't really give their full out. I know Red's going to be super critical of her dance oh, technique, no. but it's a kind of a little glimpse of the, the process of rehearsing and the beauty of this process of creating an amazing dance. So let's take a look at the clip. I love it, you know, because then it goes into the kids and the beauty of their little, the innocence and the energies of all the interaction. And then it goes back to, to the old man who was played by Carlos, which is brilliant too. Um, what is the process of rehearsal for you? What, is, what are some experiences you want to share? Ooh. Or some challenges? Challenges. Uh, definitely, I would say just, you know, creating your character, building, you know, who you are. And, I don't know, finding, you know, how would she react to this? And as Miss Mickey, like, tells me, you know, even just simple things like how I hold the nutcracker, you know, how I look at it, it's really supposed to be. If you don't, I don't know, I, I think if you don't build the character for yourself and you don't really believe it, it's, the audience isn't going to believe it. So yeah. I've been struggling in rehearsal trying to get into that mindset. Like, you know, Clara, Clara is naive, innocent, you know, very youthful, maybe curious. What does she want? What does Clara want? What does Clara want? What's Clara What's want? her dream? Because you think about the whole act two, there's a lot of interpretation of whether this is Clara's kind of vision of mm -hmm. something, you know, the dance of the sugar plum fairies, mm -hmm. or is it something that really comes to life for her, that she's transported into an amazing place because of what she wants in life? Mm -hmm. Kind of neat. I think that's up to the audience. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. yeah. Leave that to the audience. Mm -hmm. do you, by the way, do you know the uh, background of the Nutcracker, the history of the actual Nutcracker, I think it's German, and mm -hmm. it used to be um, bought and given to people in their houses as presents to ward off evil. It's kind of mm -hmm. a sign of good luck. And also, the Nutcracker, it shows its teeth. If you always see the image of the traditional, because it's supposed to ward off evil. It's, it's like, and, oh, and no. it also That's represents the cycle of life, because you crack nuts, and then the nits, the seeds go back into the ground, and then it's really quite a nice metaphor. Oh. So it's yeah. another layer for you to think yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> another layer for your yeah. character. Um, so yeah, there are lots of like little um, elements we want to break down a little bit more, but let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back, and then we'll talk about, you know, the, the, the world of a teenage girl and her interpretation of dreams and Mickey being a professional dancer and coming here and I can't believe you just said that you were going to be retiring because is this like public 
I don't college. know. You know, I don't know. you're way too young. Oh, and you're a gorgeous is. dancer. So oh, um, let's come back and talk more about Nutcracker. So don't go away. <laughs> This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. They said I could play, so any chance to play at all. That's my life. I love music. Yeah. I saw it. Hello, Think Tech Hawaii is a Japanese version of the host of the 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 Japanese version of the host こんにちはハワイ各週の月曜日2時からぜひ皆さん見てくださいホストの国瀬ゆかりでしたアロハ Back to Pop Talk here. I'm Crystal talking about Nutcracker, the traditions and how it kind of places gender stereotypes and racial stereotypes in it and people don't really think about questioning it but when you do think about it then it goes hmm wow that was uh, pretty racist or maybe it's the movement of the times and we're really reading into things when we shouldn't I don't know, it's up to you. Let's talk yeah. about it I'm back here with Red and Mickey. Well, do you agree? There was some little nodding of the heads there. Yeah, that was an interesting move on the yeah. times. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we're yeah. taking it too What do you far. think about that? Like, do, are we hypersensitive to women's issues now where we're kind of like scraping into things where we shouldn't? Or is this mm -hmm. important and this is good to challenge why Clara should be this passive girl who just gets a doll and doesn't get to fight in the scene? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that. Well, she does get to stun the Rat King. I'm not sure if he, she stuns him or kills him. But I, I don't know. I, I see my slipper. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Not like a, a What dagger. do you do? You like? Uh, I, I'm like, slipper? oh no, oh, he's going to die. And then I look at my shoe. Oh, and then I throw this my. This is the only thing I have. <laughs> <laughs> like the sword doesn't kill the Rat King, my shoe does. So there's that. My heel shoe. <laughs> nope. Well, let's take a look at a picture. There's like, you're all dressed up for the, when we were taking photos for the. Uh, the Nutcracker, and you have this beautiful dress on. You have to work with a hoop. You've got gloves on. Do we have that photo? And you're like, uh, just, um, just look at that. Okay, so you have this uh, embroidered, like, so big dress. And look at the yes. little mites. I mean, they have to dance around in these costumes. And you have, like, this. Think about how people dress then. I'm just thinking. A teenage girl would have to wear gloves hoop skirt, corset, right? You can't really be taking a sword, right? right. You think about it. Um, and uh, and the hair, what's, what about the process? What's with the curls? Yeah. What, like, this is <laughs> so ancient. <laughs> what's with the, uh, I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, oh, it's that. gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah. But yeah, if you had modern hair on that, like now, it really wouldn't do it, would it? No. So people take it for granted. We don't know the process that goes behind the making of something. I mean, it takes hours to set your curls. Uh, what else? What are some issues that you have to deal with? Makeup. Mm, makeup. Oh, I hate makeup. <laughs> so, <laughs> takes so long. It's and fixing your dresses and figuring out how to dance within, like, you know, with certain things. And that's Miss Pam. And she's the, the, the gorgeous founder of this whole Valley Hawaii and made it what it is today. And she's always on ball watching everything, too. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, there, there's a woman's role for you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's a strong woman. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for, yeah. for Miss Pam. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you can be feminine and strong at the same time. Do you mm -hmm. agree? Yes. 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 Okay. And I agree it's important if you're a female and it's okay for with you to be female. I, I think that's interesting that you brought up that. Are we, are we overthinking it? I think it's very powerful to be female and to embody everything about that. What about the combination of being female and being a woman of color? Because it's interesting that you danced for a company that was supposed to be of <laughs> color, mm -hmm. and you mentioned before that you've had, um, have you been kind of typecast in certain roles because oh, yeah. you're Asian? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hear it. So speaking of when we were talking about the Chinese variation before, I've done every Chinese variation in every Nutcracker I've ever been in. And you didn't know those for this one. No, I had no idea they did chopsticks. <laughs> and uh, they probably thought I knew, but I didn't know. <laughs> um, but it was like bound, you know, every, every 
every year the cast list would go up, I kind of know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of times in companies, your roles are based off of your height as well. Right. Um, and I specifically remember being much taller than all of the other girls who were doing the Chinese dance. <laughs> But there was probably another reason for me being cast as Chinese. I'm not Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm Korean. Yeah, that's the thing. People that's can't funny. even distinguish yeah. that. Right? So yeah. if they're under a Chinaman hat, yeah. it's, all, it's, it's all the same. Asian, whatever. <laughs> she doesn't yeah. need to do the makeup. It's OK. <laughs> yeah. no. But Ballet Hawaii actually is the first um, in that cracker I have never done Chinese. Oh. oh. So. And it's not even Arabian. It's like Hawaiian now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so very cool. different. I did get to do Hawa um, the Arabian variation in their original production, right. which was also pretty amazing, because I have never done the Arabian variation right. other than here mm -hmm. at Ballet Hawaii. Ah. Um, Let's talk about yeah. that, the, the, this um, new revamped uh, Hawaiian backdrop for the Nutcracker mm -hmm. at Ballet Hawaii. What's that? And how long ago did we start that? I think this is our third, third, year. third year. Okay. So yeah. what's the reinterpretation? What's it set in? <laughs> uh, it's, set, it's set in the 1858 Kingdom of Hawaii, so it, it's still a little bit ancient. It's not, not modernized. <laughs> um, and the party scene takes place at Washington Place, which is a historical, mm. an historical monument, I guess, in the yeah. city, um, with Mary Dominus hosting the party with her son John. Mm. Um, and a bunch of characters are invited to the party, like Lydia Paki, who becomes Queen Lilio Kalani, mm. Um, and her brother David Kalakaua come to the party and the party is this is the first Christmas tree I believe in Hawaii. Oh wow. So yeah I know there's some things that I didn't know but apparently um, Septim and Pam did a lot of research to put these little elements into the ballet that I think sometimes the audience doesn't really know about so it's it's I think nice we have one photo from the opening in the, um, in the party scene where all the kids are surrounded by, is that Drosselmeyer with the eye patch? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have that yeah. one to pull up, but yeah. continue talking. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really interesting. I didn't know that yeah. there's so much historical There is a lot, yes. Yeah. Um, so it's this Christmas party. Mary Dominus, I think, actually held a Christmas party for children in Hawaii. Uh -huh. um, and that's where the oh, influence wow. So this was the actual from. first party, mm -hmm. kind of reenactment yeah. of the first Christmas party. Yeah. And then we've um, sort of changed the dolls and toys around to represent more Hawaiian characters. We have a hibiscus doll and oh. a palace guard doll. Um, I believe it um, so has something to do with the, the Lilio Kalani's palace. And what then, would the girls and boys have been dressed as if it was Hawaiian, though? I mean, but it was kind of colonial, yes, so it was yes, similar. Yes, exactly. So time. that's why, yeah, we're, um, even Lydia and David come dressed in Western, Western yeah. wear. Yeah. Because um, so at that time, with the Western influence, they were dressing differently. So it's really interesting to see similarities and differences when you, you not challenge tradition, but you highlight it by using a different kind of a mm -hmm. uh, cultural background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with uh, us being all of different cultural backgrounds, it's really interesting to throw that into it too, mm -hmm. right? I mean, is Clara, I don't know, do you ever think of her as being Asian or is she oh. Western? What's her upbringing? What your family background is? You know, if you really want to yeah. crack into like the role of a person, you have to think about the backstory. <laughs> I'm, I mean, as a little kid, I always uh, imagined Clara as like a blonde, you know, regular. You see, that's because of yeah. the girl. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. When you know, when I was a little kid, I um, went to Washington D.C. and saw the Universal Ballet. They're from mm -hmm. Korea. And that was the first time I'd seen an entire ballet company of Asian dancers. Oh. And I said, I want to be in that company. Huh. And that was what drove me to go to the Kirov, actually, because oh. they feed, they're, they're connected to Universal Ballet. Right. Um, and they're connect, but I never ended up dancing with them. But it was pretty amazing to see that. Yeah. Because you do always grow up thinking. I did too, that Claire is this little blonde girl. <laughs> but that's why culture is such an important element in, in creativity, too, because you want to feel like you fit and you want to feel like you're being represented. And, you know, that's the beauty of Hawaii, too, because we're so surrounded by such a heavily Asian influence, too. Mm -hmm. And you look at the cast. I mean, you want to talk about the cast? Like, what? Everyone's where Asian. Everybody is, <laughs> well, everybody's everybody, Asian. Right? There's a nice mix, and there's, it's really yeah. quite international there, right? Mm -hmm. But there's always an outweigh of more girls than boys, right? In previous mm -hmm. uh, productions, a lot of the girls had to play the soldiers, and they still do. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a gender-reversing of yeah. roles. 
right? Sometimes party boys too. I, mm -hmm. I used to have to play male roles. <laughs> Did you? Sometimes. Did you not yeah. enjoy that? No. I uh, played the jester in Cinderella ooh. one year, actually, That's when I went back and guested with my former um, <laughs> school. They didn't have a, a male guest dancer to do it, and I could jump. So right. they put me in that role. Oh, okay. It's really funny. Fun. But yeah, there's always that. That happens. I guess it doesn't wouldn't happen on a larger scale. It was a pretty small production. They would want to have an actual man do mm -hmm. that role. Right. But um, what are some big names of um, principal dancers coming to Valley Hawaii that are part of this production? Do you guys know? Well, this year we have some new people, right? Yes, we do. Yes. Um, um, Joaquin Deleuze is coming back. He's been our cavalier for many, many years. Yeah. He recently retired from New York City Ballet, but he's going to do one more with us. Awesome. Um, and then our Sugar, pl sugar Plumeria. Oh, I like that. This oh, year, like yes, yes, is Angelica Generosa. Mm. She is a soloist with Pacific Northwest Ballet. Um, and speaking of, of ethnicities, I believe she's Filipino, I believe. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, but I think that's always interesting yes. to bring. Um, dancers here to Hawaii who look like people here because you know, yes. I think then you know you'll have the little kids going to the, see the show and they'll, they won't have that question yes. of yes. can I dance or not because right. they're being represented on every scale and we have Leslie Roush who is this amazingly beautiful oh. tall blonde woman right. you know so yeah, we have a, yeah. a complete scale of of dancers. Can we pull up that gorgeous picture of the flowers there's this one um, that was the Hawaiian version with the, uh, the, the, this was the ending scene. We saw, saw it in the beginning with all the flowers. What kind of flowers were they? Were those pink? Those are crown, crown flowers. Crown and, flowers. No, no, no. Sorry, no. those are trumpet flowers. Because oh. the crown flowers are these, are like, the, purple. Oh, right, the pr green. Yeah. yeah. They're, I mean, this is amazing, amazing. I mean, I don't even want to, um, like, show it because you have to come and see the, the, the performance oh, yeah, itself. But it is amazing. absolutely spectacular. And the reinterpretation of the traditional ballet with the Hawaiian back. Look at the rainbow. You see the um, mm. the background of the ocean, and like you said, the inclusivity of, of different uh, people representing mm. different nations. I see you there in your skimpy <laughs> Hawaiian. <laughs> I actually <laughs> sewed another leaf onto that costume <laughs> last year. <laughs> so let's tell everybody how to get tickets and what we should look out for because this is a show not to be missed. I mean, I'm serious. It is an absolutely gorgeous production. Hawaiian background interpretation of the classic Nutcracker by Tchaikovsky. Um, tell us how to get tickets. Uh, I think we, you just go online to ballethawaii.org and purchase your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go through Ticketmaster. You can go yes. down to the Blaisdell office in person and get the go to the box office and buy tickets. Okay, yes. and again, so we have Miss Mickey who is playing the. Uh -huh. The Hawaiian. Oh, Hi'iaka, who is the Arabian dance. Okay. And then I get to also get to do Lydia Paki in the party scene. Okay, mm -hmm. and? Uh, I'll be Clara. <laughs> You'll see me <laughs> as Clara. <laughs> Clara playing the role of Clara. No, but it's a beautiful world of the teenage girl going and embracing all these fantasies and dreams and desires, right? Mm -hmm. And I have a tiny, tiny part as a black widow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the merry widow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's in black. So again, um, this is uh, a, a really nice celebration of, of the holidays, of the Christmas spirit. It's also a celebration of inclusivity, like I said, traditions, reinterpretations, intercultural mm -hmm. connections, and international kind of a combining of a fantastic production. So mm -hmm. wishing you both an amazing production. You too. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Go see it, and uh, let's celebrate Hawaii and Christmas by seeing the Nutcracker. And thank you for joining us today.